right, supply lines of the American Revolution. Here you go. Let's, we, um, I guess the first thing to say, and really what I've been saying for a while, ever since the, the first year of the game or so, is uh, in, in my playthrough, uh, not, not since it came out. I didn't know anything about it until I started playing it, really is that this is not my kind of game. And that's, that's a, big, uh, a big caveat you have to look at with whatever I say. Many of the negatives, and I'm going to try to avoid them, but if I do say negatives, they may not be such great negatives for many players because, in essence, I'm finding this game to be too much of a thinky, chess-like uh, competition where, you know, basically you have almost all, you have almost perfect information. Yes, there's some randomness in it, but it's relatively limited. Um, it has a very light effect on play, essentially. Too light of an effect on play for something like Warfare. So, immediately I would say this is not uh, randomizing enough things to be uh, a simulation, essentially. But within that, you know, there are games that I enjoy that don't qualify as simulations. There are games that I enjoy that don't have a lot of randomness, although they do tend to have uh, a certain kind of entropy from multiple player actions. So something like Diplomacy, which I don't know how much I like, but the 18xx games have, you know, essentially no luck in them. I love them. Um, but they have a great deal of emergent entropy within them, <laughs> essentially. Just by the interactions of the various players and what they want to do. I think that's a very difficult thing to, to achieve, but... Uh, those game, that game in particular, the XX series, uh, those games, uh, do manage to capture that for me. Um, Tigris and Euphrates is another one. Go feels like even with just two players, there's a, a, a great deal of trade-off and an entropy of play. Okay. With this one, though, I felt myself just being annoyed by what was required to play well, which is a lot of counting of spaces and projecting a couple of turns in advance what would happen instead of being able to... So, like... I'm just making sure I don't have T going. I think that, I don't know what that noise is. I, I mean, obviously that's a chainsaw, but it might be the heater. Um, anyhow, uh, <laughs> I'm getting too easily distracted here. Uh, this, this one I, I, I felt was of a type of sort of Ah, it reminded me of the geometry that kind of irritated me when I was playing uh, Africa Core. I had kind of gotten a kick out of Africa Core some, at some point in my life. Uh, not early on, but also not the last time I played it, where I thought, eh, it's kind of a cool game. Um, but I felt like later on I started feeling this sort of geometry uh, just prevailing over everything else and being able to figure out the peculiarities of the hex grid and where you wanted to, you know, there were sort of perfect places you could put your units and whatnot. And this game is very much like that and about that. Let me uh, talk a little bit about components. Um, counters. Nice, thick, heavy, heavy-duty counters. I actually like the graphics, at least on the unit counters. Not so thrilled with the, the tri-corner hats, but whatever. Nor with the X's for cities that are destroyed, but you're not going to use them. You got cubes. What can you say about cubes? They're cubes, you know? Uh, I found the map very, very attractive. 
actually really like the muted tones that it has and uh, uh, for a for a point to point map so much nicer than the bubble maps and whatnot the tones uh, flow into each other I didn't find myself having a lot of difficulty in discerning sometimes when you have muted tone maps it's hard to tell what's going on where I felt like these worked really really well um, they didn't they didn't blend into the background too much not that thrilled with the dice, but whatever, they're dice. They're not what I would have chosen to put in. I, I would have put smaller dice in. I'm not a big fan of big dice. Um, and uh, you actually need more than just a couple of dice for this game. Um, I found myself having to pull. Well, one factor about these dice, which I mentioned early on, is that uh, there really should be two colors because... There's a competitive die-off uh, at the at, in each turn to see who gets the initiative, and you really kind of have to be able to discern between the two players. Sure, if we're sitting across the table from each other and we each roll a die, we can tell the difference between them. But it, it, you know, maybe they bump together, or maybe like me, you're trying to play this uh, solitaire. I think this is not a great choice for a game to try to play solitaire. Um, Again, perfect, you know, close to perfect information type game and uh, close to deterministic. That's where I get the perfect information. If it was, if it was truly deterministic, it would be fully perfect information. The only thing you don't know is uh, what some of the die rolls are going to work out to be. Um, the initiative die roll can be kind of important. You could have yourself set up so that you can make a big move of some sort or another and that the order of play is going to be very important I didn't really see anything like that during my play but I can imagine it as being the case um, but the combat die rolls feel like they're really um, not terribly important and I feel like battles, you know, if you look at, like, the major battle of Saratoga, for example, that feels like it, it, it hinged on so many um, factors that were unknown and could not be accounted for in terms of leadership quality and all kind of stuff like that. And in this game, the battles are pretty much determined by two things. How many troops you got and how many cubes you got assigned to the battle. And so, you know, yeah, you might get a little bit around the edges, but who wins the battle is pretty much determined by how many cubes, uh, how many troops you have there. Um, how much damage you do is how many cubes you bring along. The rule book, I found it readable. Uh, no problem there, really. But as a reference manual, it didn't work terribly well. The game is very procedural. And when you have a lot of paragraphs and not a lot of bullet point sections, no play aids or anything like that, I found myself having a lot of trouble figuring out um, what sort of meshes together. And to be able to make the kind of decision making that you have to make in the game, you really, really need to be able to grasp everything all at once. And that's not trivial on a first play. Um, and sometimes it was hard to find rules that I needed and whatnot. No references, no reference numbers, you know, even though there were numbers on the rules, they didn't bother to use them as references throughout most of the rule book. There may be points where they did. Yeah, I see one where they did. But certainly not as much as there should be. And I really think that, like, a one-page play aid would be really, could, could have been really, really helpful in this, and perhaps somebody could make it. Uh, but my big gripe is really uh, the way it plays. At first, I had the feeling that this was uh, uh, kind of defeating all my general inhibitions against, uh, well, first of all, it wasn't clear to me how deterministic the game was until I started getting into battles, which didn't happen right away. But the maneuver aspects and everything felt like they were kind of interesting, kind of getting yourself into position all the time to land the blow. You don't really get to land a blow, though. 
uh, you're more positioning yourself into into a location where you can you know force your way through, uh, basically. Um, at first, when I didn't really have too big a too great a grasp on what was going on, and I, I still certainly don't, but um, when I had a much much worse grasp on what was going on, I was actually kind of uh, captivated by the game. Um, you know that the first turn or two, I thought, oh, this cool shit going on here and everything. Ah, uh, but it started it started really uh, wearing on me very very quickly as I started to realize more and more what the game was actually about. It's kind of funny because usually if I read through a rule book, set up a game, and don't really get what I'm supposed to do, I find that very frustrating. Here I found that kind of exciting and more interesting than once I found out what I was supposed to do. In fact, to the point where like I was sucked into the game and, and very excited about discovering how to do things in it in a way that it's just not normal for me. Normally, I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to figure out the basic mechanisms and try to understand how they work. I don't know why that happened to me here. Uh, I don't have a good answer for that. Can't help you there. Uh, but in the actual play of the game, it again reminds me a little bit, of, a great deal of a chess-like situation, where you're trying to position your pieces in a way that your opponent fails to cover, and then you go and you wallop him and mug him in the corner and get a surprise victory out. You know, one that he didn't see what you were doing, sort of like a fool's mate type thing. I don't think that's the only way you can win. I think you can win with strategy. I'm also a little worried. It's very, very easy, I think, for both players to ensure that there's a draw. The Brits can pretty much ensure it just by not really fighting. <laughs> like, it's going to be damn hard. If they don't try to win the game, they can pretty much guarantee a draw. But I also think that the Colonials can usually force a draw if things are starting to look bad for them. And I think that's the case for both players, really. So I get the feeling that the game doesn't wouldn't often generate victory. Um, that victory is going to only really come by walloping someone in the corner. Oh, hi. All my buddies just walked by. Let's see about them. There they are. There. <laughs> and about a half a dozen of them. Anyway, that's all we're going to talk about here. Not too much. You know, like I said, uh, it's not my kind of game, so it's hard for me to really dissect it uh, in terms of, oh, God, this is horrible, you know, whatever. But from that pure strategy sort of point of view, I do feel like a draw, you know, if one player decides he wants a draw because he, he feels like he doesn't have a chance, he can probably play for that and get it. Um, which is something that's not the case in chess, right? Like... Yeah, maybe maybe half games you could do that, uh, come, come to a point. You know, obviously, like, Black is often playing for the draw right from the beginning. And they don't always succeed, you know? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, anyway. Not that I'm a competitive chess player, either. Uh, this is uh, one of those, yeah, it was kind of interesting to explore it for, like, the first hour or so that I played. Now, obviously, it's a short, it's meant to be a fairly short playing game, a couple hours or whatever. And I think would appeal, I think it would appeal to players who like, you know, maybe some smaller, you know, like the Ancient Battles Deluxe kind of hit me with the same kind of, ah, it, it hits, you know, certain aspects of, of this. You can figure out what you need to do and just kind of do it and, and beat your opponent just by playing the game better. The difference here is I don't feel like this is pretty... Not just that this isn't a, a great simulation, but also that the historical basis of some of the stuff that, that's going on and whatnot doesn't feel absolutely correct to me either. Which, you know, at least in Ancient Battles Deluxe, I felt like the battles uh, 
worked out in a believable fashion. Here, the results that I'm getting, yeah, they just don't feel right. Like the fact that one that I pick on late in the game in in the playthrough is that, oh look, the U.S. produced all the armaments that they could. You know, the colonials produced all the armaments that they could within. Uh, within the colonies, that means the Brits can't ship any ammo, you know, which really handcuffed them and, and cost them uh, a, a turn's worth of combat. Oh, yeah. Anyway, that's that.